During World War II, one of the most famous aerial exploits was the Royal Air Force's attack on the Ruhr dams in Germany, the night of the 16th to 17th of May 1943, when Wing Commander Guy Gibson led No. 617 Squadron Lancasters, carrying special bouncing bombs, to try and put out of commission the Eder, Myrna and Zorpa dams. The novel new weapons managed to breach two dams and damage a third, causing extensive disruption to German industry and significant loss of life. Number 617 Squadron carries the proud name Dambusters today, an event immortalised on film and for which Gibson received the Victoria Cross. But, incredibly, Number 617 Squadron is not the only aerial unit to be called the Dambusters. For the United States Navy's Attack Squadron 195 also carries the name, gained for a daring raid on another dam eight years after the British attack. The dam in question was not in Germany, but in Korea, and the year was 1951. On the 25th of June 1950, North Korean forces had crossed the border and invaded South Korea. World War II hero General Douglas MacArthur was placed in command of United Nations forces to try and defeat the invaders. After effecting an amphibious landing at Incheon on Korea's west coast, MacArthur was able to cut the supply routes to the North Korean army, besieging American and South Korean forces around the city of Busan causing the North Koreans to retreat back across the border. MacArthur vigorously pursued the North Koreans all the way up to the border with communist China, prompting Chairman Mao Zedong to intervene. A huge Chinese offensive caused the UN forces to retreat until, in March 1951, the US-led forces counterattacked, recapturing Seoul and edging the front line back into North Korea. And so into Seoul. Lost once, but taken again. Hua Chon Dam stood 50 miles northeast of the South Korean capital of Seoul. Built by the Japanese during the occupation of Korea, construction lasting from 1939 to 1944, the Hua Chon Dam held back the waters of the Han and Pukchong rivers. The dam was just over 1,400 feet long and stood 267 feet tall. The dam provided, via two hydroelectric plants, the main source of electricity for South Korea. But by April 1951, this impressive dam was under North Korean and Chinese control. They used it to release excess water that knocked out five pontoon bridges downstream being used by UN forces. The Americans had identified its value to the Communists as a major source of electricity and as a weapon that could be used to cause major flooding downstream, hampering United Nations operations. It was feared that Communist forces, by opening the floodgates at Hua Chon, could completely stop the US advance. Initially, the task of seizing the dam was given to US ground forces. On the 9th of April 1951, the famous 7th Cavalry, once commanded by George Armstrong Custer, the Battle of the Little Bighorn in 1876, launched Operation Rugged. Enemy resistance was very stiff, but the Americans got to the dam on the 16th of April and managed to hold it until the 21st, when a massive Chinese counterattack pushed them back. Unfortunately, before work was completed by army engineers on destroying the dam's floodgates. Destroying the actual dam was not feasible, it being 240 feet thick at its base and faced in rock. Next, the air option was attempted. 
B-29 superfortresses were sent in to bomb the dam from high altitude, but none of the bombs dropped actually hit the dam. A low-level precision attack was suggested in place of high-level bombing. And on the 30th of April, Sky Raiders attacked using Tiny Tim rockets, a heavy anti-ship rocket of World War II vintage, and a pair of 2,000-pound bombs, the latter actually tearing a hole in one of the dam's spillway gates. But the damage was not enough to affect the dam's operation. A more extensive assault was required. Sky Raiders of VA-195 and Composite Squadron VC-35 aboard the carrier USS Princeton were assigned the mission. The Sky Raider was already out of date by the time of Korea. It was an old-fashioned piston engine beast in a world of sleek jets, nicknamed the Flying Dump Truck. But that was the point. The Sky Raider could carry pretty much any ordnance then in service. In the carrier's magazine was a stock of Mark 13 aerial torpedoes. The Sky Raiders were hastily modified to accommodate the large weapons. Few of the airmen had any experience with torpedoes. The tin fish would have to be delivered to the water behind the dam at a correct speed and height and angle. Too high or fast and the torpedoes would plunge too deep or break up on impact. It was decided that each aircraft would release at an altitude of just 100 feet above the water, about as low as it was possible to safely fly. They would be facing a lot of North Korean and Chinese anti-aircraft guns and machine guns. U.S. Navy Commander Dick Merrick, Commander Carrier Group 19, led eight Sky Raiders on the mission on the 1st of May 1951. The rather eccentric Merrick flew into action carrying a camera, a pair of binoculars and a World War II German Luger pistol and puffing away on a pipe. The Sky Raiders were escorted by eight F-4U Corsairs, a VF-192 and four from VF-193. Once over the target, the Sky Raiders attacked in pairs. Flak was intense. It was imperative to drop the torpedoes from the correct altitude and at the correct speed. A nail biting 100 feet and a slow 160 miles per hour. Each pair of Sky Raiders dropped their torpedoes about a thousand feet from the dam. Once over the dam, the US aircraft madly throttled up and tried to clear the trailing flak, getting out of range. Out of the eight torpedoes that were released, six ran straight at the dam, exploding on target, knocking out two gates and badly damaging another, millions of tons of water gushing through the breaches to flood the rivers beyond, causing serious disruptions to advancing communist forces. Importantly, the North Koreans and Chinese could no longer cause floods when it suited them. Preventing them from interfering in this manner with UN ground operations. Sadly, two weeks later, Commander Merrick was killed in action. He was posthumously awarded the Navy Cross for the Dam Busters mission. As for the Sky Raider, it soldiered on to serve in the Vietnam War. VF-195 had earned its current name the Dam Busters. Today, as VFA-195, they fly the FA-18E Super Hornet at Marine Corps Air Station Iwakuni, Japan. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share and also visit my audiobook channel War Stories with Mark Felton details below. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box.